Hey there, welcome back to Farmcraft. I'm John, and this beast behind me is my boom lift. I've got a tree job that I need to do with this, but the lift is having a little problem. I think this actually is a little problem. I replaced the potentiometers previously in a different video on the controls in the basket, and uh, that fixed a couple of them, but now I'm having problems with the drive control. And I've double checked, it's not the potentiometer, it's working correctly. Um, but what happens is sometimes when you go to drive quite frequently now, Rather than like going forward, it'll kind of stutter forward. And if you mess with the controls and unplug it a few times, sometimes you can get it to go back to operating normally, and then it'll do it again. And um, when you're on site and you need to be going up and down and also driving back and forth, that's a real pain, so that needs to be fixed. So let me get this thing out of here, and uh, we're going to work on it, see if we can't get this thing working right. This video is sponsored by Ethos Life. More on them later. Well, my GoPro decided to screw up and it missed me uh, changing out this control. But luckily I can show you, it wasn't that big of a deal. Pretty simple operation really. So how did I know it was the control? Well, this control here and that control there are exactly the same. And the plugs that go into them are also exactly the same. So when the drive wouldn't work, what I, would, what I had been doing was unplugging this, which is the lift, and just plugging that into there and using the lift to drive, and it would always work perfectly. Um, and then if I tried to use the lift here, it would do the same thing. It would stutter and not work all the time. Uh, occasionally, if I moved some of these little adjustments here, which I'm pretty sure are potentiometers in the potted control board, uh, that would affect it a little bit, and sometimes it would work okay for a little while. So there was something in the, the circuit board that was not going right. Here's the old one. That's the new one, which I got from Bennett Equipment again. And I'll tell you guys, they keep giving me the best prices. They've become my first go-to when I need parts because uh, they're just, they do so much better than, than the other folks that I'm calling. JLG wanted over $1,000 for one of these. And Bennett has asked me not to list prices because prices change and people are gonna call expecting to get the price that they saw on YouTube, which I, I understand, but I don't think they'll mind me saying this. This was less than half what JLG wanted, and it's the same darn thing. I mean, it's the same part. Plugs right in, yeah. Basically, I just undid some bolts, unplugged the old one, bolted the new one in, plugged it in, and the drive works perfect. So these axles extend out to 10 feet, of course, too wide to drive down the highway. So they've got a hydraulic cylinder in there that pulls it in. You can see one side brings me to nine, the other side will bring me down to eight. And um, it's a little bit of a pain to do by yourself, uh, easier with a helper. Like sometimes the pins, just whatever position it's in, that one won't come out. I've been able to get the other ones out. And then this side is the steering axle. So I've got the tie rod here and I need to be able to get that out, but that's jammed too. Once I jack it up though, that shouldn't be a problem. So here's a little selector valve. Left is for steer, that's where I was. So this is where I need to be. So that essentially switches, instead of doing this cylinder, which acts to steer it, it's gonna do the internal cylinder, which acts to retract it. get that last pin out. I think I'm going to need a hammer or maybe a crowbar to get those pins out. I 
shouldn't have tried to film this. I usually don't have this much trouble. All right, Jennifer came out here and even with her wiggling the controls back and forth and me putting penetrating oil in here, it, it won't come up. Uh, so this pin must have bent. So basically I'm gonna have to uh, see if I can't pound it out. Bending. It might have moved a little bit. Bent. That was the problem. Maybe I need to make some of these out of some harder, like uh, hardened and tempered metal so that they won't bend. They'll be more springy. Eh, for now, I think I'll take this over to the anvil and just pound it back because uh, it'll work for a while. Don't worry, it's only temporary. So now we put it down, pivot 180 degrees, lift up the other side, do it again, but that side doesn't have the steering cylinder or the tie rod, so it's quite a bit easier. Now we just need a semi and a trailer to come up that road. I'm playing this unloading part sped up because it's boring otherwise, but this is actually uh, fairly dangerous. If that, uh, if one of the wheels were to slip off the trailer, well, let's just say I don't want to know what would happen because uh, it would basically turn 
that basket into a catapult. And of course, the only place you can drive this thing is from the basket. Yeah, I probably should have my harness on and be strapped in, but um, yeah, you know. <laughs> Slow and steady is the name of the game. The semi is actually on a hill and then the ramps make it even steeper, so I didn't want this thing to start sliding, but it's rubber tires on wood. Good traction. It all went fine. Gotta put those axles back out. The boom won't go over 15 feet unless the axles are extended. It sure is nice to have the drive function working properly. What a stupid, absent-minded contractor. Yeah, I'm not a contractor. These are just good friends of mine. Um, I'll fix it. <laughs> it's funny, you don't even notice that you're dragging on the ground with this thing. It's so big and heavy. Shoddy work. All right, so here's the main job right here. That old pine tree is totally dead and I think it's probably still sound enough to be climbed, but I am no tree climber. Uh, I have a lift, so I'm gonna do it that way. Gonna take that down from the top down and all the, whole, the wood's gonna go down the hill. Um, I looked at, you know, maybe trying to save some of the lumber out of that, but that thing is so full of bug holes and woodpecker holes, it is just gonna be bug infested. It's not worth the time. So the only thing it would be good for is firewood, but trying to haul it all up the hill just to take it home and burn it when I have plenty of wood at home to burn, doesn't make any sense. So we are just gonna dump it in the woods down there and get rid of it. At the same time, there are a lot of limbs hanging out over their house that uh, could be trimmed back, some dead, some just to open up some light. They've got a lot of moss on the back of the roof. I have to keep in mind this here is a power line right here, and that is already transformed, so it's just 240 volts. Uh, it's not like it's a high voltage line, but uh, I still am going to try not to touch it with the lift. Uh, but but actually, you know, as long as it, the lift is perfectly insulated, um, it would not really cause a problem if I were to touch it, but still. I've got three saws that I'm going to be using. I've got my wife's new electric chainsaw. That'll be nice, especially up high in the tree when the stuff's small. I won't have to be stopping it and starting it. I can just grab it and go. I've got my small gas powered saw and then my bigger saw once I get further down the tree. And uh, I'm just gonna take off chunks that I can handle and throw them down the hill. In here I have my harness, my rope, my repelling gear. That's always with me when I'm up in the lift. So I think we're ready to get to work. Man, it doesn't take long for this thing to start to make you worried. <laughs> Get up there pretty quick. This is why I did the boom rebuild, because now I have confidence in it. This is where this battery powered saw is nice. I don't have to start it. I can just cut.
am about at full reach, I think. Yeah, that's it. All right, so I gotta take that guy that way, I guess. Not perfect, but there's not much down there for me to damage. All right, should just be able to take that that way. So even though I'm still almost at full extension on my lift, I'm way up in this tree. It's already big enough I have to use my big saw. And this tree is about to teach me a lesson.
Do you see that? Crap. Oh, it just ripped my chainsaw out of my hands. It just fell. Well, I guess we're about to see how good steel is. <laughs> Where'd the log go? It's funny, I'm used to cutting hardwood, not pine, and it just grabbed that chain and just ripped it right out of my hands. Bar doesn't look bent. Chain's not even loose. Yeah, that looks good. Pulls over good. Yeah, on first glance, it looks like it's okay. <laughs> Well, that's rather ridiculous. That thing fell from all the way up there, attached to, I think, that, and it's fine. Man, I dodged a bullet on that one. That's a thousand dollar saw. All right, back to work. Well, that was disconcerting, having that saw ripped out of my hand. Um, never had that happen before. And my first thought is I should have had it tied to the basket, but then that whole thing would have, like the log would have been tied to the basket through the saw and the whole thing might have snapped back up at me. I'm not really sure. I think I just need to do my cuts better so that it doesn't do that. said it before, I'll say it again, tree work is dangerous. So you remember when I dropped my saw 60 feet onto the ground? <laughs> yeah, me too. So many of you uh, know that uh, my best friend is a professional tree worker of many decades. He's the one who's taught me everything I know about tree work and much of what I've passed on to you guys. I talked to him about this and he kind of chuckled and said, uh, it's not a matter of if that's going to happen to you if you're a tree climber, it's a matter of how many times. Um, basically, the log grabbing your saw and yanking it out of your hand is a thing, and you do it long enough, it's going to happen. You need to be aware that that can happen, and you need to take steps to try to prevent it. And uh, that, that was my big uh, screw-up. I'd never had that happen before, and I, I really wasn't even thinking about it. I talked to him about what, what you're supposed to do, and um, they make this, which is an interesting device. This is a breakaway chainsaw lanyard. This will break if it gets more than 200 pounds of force exerted on it, because exactly like my uh, initial concern was with tethering it off, if you take like just a hard piece of webbing and you attach it to yourself or to the lift and it gets jerked and then snaps back at you, it's going to cause serious injury. Um, this prevents that. It will catch it in most cases because it's going to be less than 200 pounds of force exerted on it. But if, if it's really embedded hard in a giant log or something like that and it's just going to rip, well, then you want the saw to go. You want it to get away from you. You can buy a new saw. 
you can't buy a new face when your saw comes back and smacks you in it. So yeah, I'm real glad to have this. This is the area that has the 200 pound uh, braking strength in it. Yeah, that's a nice addition to have to my kit. And at his suggestion, I got something that I've known I needed for a while. I've just been strapping in with a piece of webbing. This is a lanyard with nice big aluminum hooks on it. The special thing about this is it has this zigzag in it and uh, that is designed to start to uh, extend out when 900 pounds of force is put on it. Now this thing's not going to break at 900 pounds of force. It's not going to break under your body weight no matter how hard you fall. But if you're really getting thrown hard, you know, if the lift like catapults me out and it gets to the point where it's pulling 900 pounds against me, this is going to start to extend and absorb that energy and cushion your fall so that you don't just get to the end of your tether and then snap back at the lift. So that's another nice addition and I'll be using that in the future. So this talk about safety brings me directly into the sponsor of today's video, Ethos Life. Tree work is dangerous. Farming and tree work actually both rank consistently in the top 10 most hazardous professions. So for me, life insurance is pretty darn important. I found this company called Ethos Life, makes it really easy to find great deals on life insurance, and I want to thank them for sponsoring the video. You know, I don't want my family to struggle or lose the farm that's been in our family for 170 years, if anything were to happen to me. So having life insurance gives me peace of mind to know that the mortgage will be paid, my girls will go to college, and they're going to have enough money to live on. I mean, the death of a family member is hard enough without having to worry, can you continue your current lifestyle? Traditionally, it's taken a lot of time talking to insurance agents, researching, and guesswork to find a good life insurance policy. But Ethos has created an efficient and easy way to find life insurance with a 100% online application. You get online, you fill out some information about yourself, you answer some simple health questions, and in most cases, you can get coverage the same day. They don't require medical exams or blood tests, so the whole process is really fast. Which is good because I sit at my computer enough editing YouTube videos, I'd rather be out working on my next project. So if you're interested in learning more about Ethos or getting your free life insurance quote, you may be surprised how easy and cheap it is to get the life insurance coverage that you need. It's best to lock in your rate as soon as possible too, because on average people pay 8-10% to more for every year that they wait to get a policy. Alright, enough yakking, let's get back to work. So continuing on, I'm just going to be very careful with my cuts and make sure I can get the saw free before I push the log off. Time to do a carburetor rebuild on this saw. This limb is hanging out over their fence and it's big enough to damage it, so I don't want to drop it. Uh, I'm just going to rope it and then I can control it better. Now I've got it there and around the trunk so I can cut that. That limb will fall, but it will self-catch on the tree, not on me.
it's hooked out here on this other limb so it didn't swing down yet. I'll just take it down in pieces. And finally untying the last piece of that limb and getting it all the way down. Roping's a great idea, but it's kind of time consuming. You'll see coming up though that it's something I should do more often. This is a 20 inch bar and it's just barely reaching across. Whew, this is like work. Let's not drop the saw again. I think this will be the last one. Got my saw again. a big tree.
So we've got the 28 inch bar to get across that big base there. And that's all that's left. That's probably 15 feet high. And it's leaning in that direction. <laughs> <clears throat> I was like, why isn't that thing falling? It just needed a moment. About 80. 80 years. It's a pretty big tree for only one person's life. While cutting up these logs, I did notice that my saw was having some issues, probably from the fall. We'll get into that later. one gone tree. Jennifer helped a bit with the cleanup that took us four hours start to finish. Still uh, quite a bit to do here. I'm going to take a little limb over there. I'm going to take two limbs that are hanging out over the house here. I mean they're directly over the house. So I think I can get the basket in position with the base where it is. If not I'll have to move but I think that'll work. I'm going to rope them and cut them in pieces so that I can control it and not drop anything on their house I hope. And then there's a fair amount of limb cleanup on that far tree and then uh, several limbs. This big limb here, I'm going to be taking the whole thing off and then just cleaning everything up. So I'm almost at full extension, but uh, plenty of clearance over the house with the boom, and I'm going to be heading down in that way, which will shorten my extension. So I'm good. I just need to rope these limbs as I take them down so they don't fall and mess up the roof. Oop. Dead limbs falling off. Not much I can do about that. That's why we're up here. So now I can cut right there. That will swing down and get caught. It's not that heavy. I ought to be able to pull it up and throw it down the hill.
You'll notice I'm cutting these limbs just from the top and that's because I don't want them to pop off suddenly. I want them to swing down so that they don't shock load the system any more than they have to. If you're wondering what the heck I'm talking about, I've got many other videos on chainsaw work and how to cut off limbs. I'll leave links in the description if you're interested. heavier than I expected. Don't want to drop that on the house. I'm trying to decide the best way to go here. They're getting really heavy, even the short pieces. So I have to rope every one. And at this point, if I cut it here, I'm no longer over the house. So one big cut here will leave a, a very heavy, but not no longer over the house piece hanging that I think I would be able to lower down with a rope. Not sure though. I know I could take it piecewise. It's gonna take a long time. Let me, let me see if I can do this in one shot. Well, not one. I'll do it here, and then I can go to the trunk. I'm no longer over the house at all, and there's nothing really down there to hit. I could just cut that off and let it fall. heavy is that thing. Oh wow. Yeah, not lifting that. Okay. It's hanging out in a spot where if I just push it a little bit that way it's not going to hit anything and I think we can just take chunks off of it like this. So let's see how this goes. So I don't want to just drop that. <clears throat> there are some stepping stones down there. I just broke one of them. And uh, I'll probably break another one. They're not a big deal. The homeowner doesn't care, but I still don't want to break stuff. So I'm going to see what I can do to kind of lower this thing. Okay, so now when I cut that off, it's going to come up through this crotch, come down and pick up on the basket. And you know, it doesn't weigh that much. Um, but it's not gonna it's not gonna put any weight on the basket, so that's fine. I should be able to lower it probably to the ground at that point. <laughs> Jack of all trades, I'm making this up as I go. See how well I can control it. Yeah, very easy.
So honestly, I thought the tree was going to be the biggest thing on this job, and it turns out cutting all these limbs right over the house was more time consuming and somewhat more difficult than the tree. You think with a lift you're just going to go up there and cut things off, but those limbs are a lot bigger than you realize, and these things have a lesson to teach me too. All right, I'm taking this entire limb off, and it's a big one, but if I cut it right here, that will swing down and none of it will be over the house anymore. And uh, when I reposition the lift, I should have easy access to chop it up. So I think that's the move. I don't think that's long enough to hit the house. If it were, it would only be the very tippy top, which is not gonna do damage because it's little flexible limbs. Mistake in progress. Do you see what I'm doing wrong? Oh! I should have seen that coming. This, ladies and gentlemen, is why you hire a professional tree worker and not a farmer. I really should have seen that coming. Just one pane of glass, not too bad. <sighs> All right, so that was really stupid. I should have seen that coming. And that's why tree workers have a ground crew so they can lower everything to the ground and uh, not risk things like that happening. So I'm going to do a lot more lowering now and get my lovely camera woman over there to help me. So I started roping most things unless it was small enough for me to easily handle and throw. There's my ground crew. I don't even pay her minimum wage. Film crew too. Lower it by the cable. You see, there's the cable. You see the cable? Mm -hmm. The torture. I have to say, I really thought having a lift would make this easier, even though I was working over a house. But um, it's still hard, it's still challenging. And um, yeah, obviously I still screw some things up. <laughs> Moral of the story, I guess even if you have a boom lift, you may still wanna hire a professional tree worker. It's not that easy. So you get the idea, there was a lot more of this, a lot more actually. I'll just show you the cool parts from here. Here's a big one. When I bought my lift, I was actually looking for a 60-footer, and I figured, well, an 80-footer will be more than I'll ever need. Turns out I needed every bit of it.
have been worse. Could have been a whole lot worse. Uh, I still need to put some paint on that, but uh, the glazing needs to set up a little bit first. I'll have to come back for that. Got all those limbs taken off. But it looks good. Everybody's happy. We didn't have any significant casualties. And this job is done. So this is kind of interesting. I couldn't get the lift to drive up on the trailer. There's a bump that it has to go over and it's uphill and it just didn't have enough power to, to get over it. So I had to put the basket on the ground and use the telescope and the drive at the same time. Never had to do that before, but it worked perfectly. So it turns out I did start having some problems with my big saw after all, after I dropped it out of a tree. Yeah, see that? That switch doesn't want to, doesn't want to switch anymore. Very hard to make it move. and can't even get it down into the start position. I feel like I'm going to break something. So let's rip this thing apart and see what the damage is, literally. I don't know why it's suddenly so difficult to actuate. So this is what we're looking at. This little thing is spring-loaded and that of course makes a connection for the kill switch and it rides there. So it's spring-loaded against that and has various positions that it clicks in I don't see any cracked plastic or anything that looks deformed, but obviously something changed. I uh, just cleaned it up and put a little dielectric grease in there. And uh, then I took this on the buffer. Just in, I couldn't feel a rough spot or anything, but I buffed the end of it just to make sure it's nice and smooth. And uh, yeah, that seemed to do the trick. Goes through the functions well now. So there you go, I think the, uh, the damage from the fall is done. Now I need to get this, um, this carb working better. So this is the original carb that came on this saw when I bought it. Uh, I'm not sure exactly when, it was more than 15 years ago. I don't even think I've ever had this thing off of here. This thing has just been a beast. That could stand to be replaced. So that's your needle. Down in there's the seat. I'm going to get out my eyes so that I can see. And that needle looks fine, but that looks fine too. This is the fuel pump side. This has a little membrane with uh, basically one-way flappers, acts like a little fuel pump. Ooh. A little bit of crud right there. 
That's not helping anything. So I just got off the phone with the dealer. Uh, they first told me that you had to order each part separately. They didn't have a rebuild kit. Um, but I think the person who was looking wasn't the parts specialist. I then talked to the parts specialist who told me steel doesn't make a rebuild kit, but Walbro does, and Walbro is the manufacturer of the carburetor. So I've got a Walbro rebuild kit on the way. So I'm gonna leave this like this, and when I get that, we will see if this thing doesn't run like it used to. You can see how that actuates the choke. So that's the run position, and then that's the start position, full choke. Click. We throw a bar on there and we'll take it outside and see how it runs. I'm no pro at this, but here's how I adjust my saw. The high speed I've got set to the standard setting because uh, I'm just above sea level. If you're at a significant altitude, you might want to change that. Yeah, I don't want to stay running, so let me turn the idle speed up. It still wouldn't stay running. I had to constantly feather the throttle to keep it going. It sounds a little too lean. I'm going to go up on that a little bit, not much. And by that I mean the low speed screw. There's a high speed, a low speed, and an idle speed. And I'm just opening the low speed just a tiny bit here. It still wouldn't stay running though. So I turn the idle speed all the way up. Still wouldn't stay running, so the only option is to open up the low speed some more. It needs more fuel. Okay, it stays running, uh, but now of course it's idling way too fast. You can see the chain is spinning. That's what we expect because I turned it all the way up. So now I'm just going to gradually turn the idle speed down until the chain stops spinning and then just a touch more. You don't want the chain to be spinning when it's idling. That's a good way to cut yourself, right in your left knee. Ask me how I know. The throttle's responsive, there's no hesitation, it's not getting close to stalling when I let off the throttle. That's what we want. That's a lot better. I'll probably uh, have to rebuild that thing in 15 years or so. Well there you go guys. That was a big job and uh, I dodged a couple bullets on it. Made a couple mistakes and learned that tree works like machining. If you cut corners, you end up working harder and working longer. Glad to have my saw running again. Uh, I've got firewood to cut for this winter, but next week, there's a real good chance you guys are gonna be seeing that old D3 dozer again. Thanks for watching, we'll see you on the next one.